Welcome to the joy of music. Today we take you on a musical visit to Geneva, Switzerland. On its beautiful lake, surrounded by parks and gardens, its name synonymous with diplomacy and international relations, and of course, the Reformation. Join us, won't you, for music from the St. Pierre Cathedral organ and the wonderful sights of Geneva. Behind me stand the statues of the four Reformation heroes of Geneva. Located on the Promenade de Bastion, below the highest remaining walls of the old city. The Monument of the Reformation, more than 330 feet long, commemorates one of Geneva's most important historical events, the Protestant Reformation as preached by John Calvin. Construction of the wall was begun in 1909 on the 400th anniversary of the birth of Calvin, who, though not born in Geneva, lived here for nearly 30 years in the mid-16th century.
When renovations were being made on St. Pierre Cathedral several years ago, it was realized that there were more structures underneath. The workers started looking closer and found a Roman temple and two Christian basilicas from the 6th and 8th centuries with beautiful mosaics and huge baptismal fonts. For 2,000 years, there has been a sanctuary on the hill of Geneva where the cathedral stands today. St. Pierre Cathedral has a most interesting history relating to the Reformation led by the Protestant theologian John Calvin. Joining us today on The Joy Music is Mr. Leo Shegg from the Geneva Tourist Board to share some fascinating facts. Welcome to The Joy Music, Leo. Thank you. I understand there were some very interesting things that happened especially to the organ during the Reformation at the Cathedral. Indeed, the organ at the Reformation got melted, and they made spoon and knives and forks of it for the hospice. Why would they do such a thing as this? Well, in Calvin's idea, they did not need any musical instrument to pray. And a wonderful music is just disturbing a bit the prayer. But there was no other reason other than the fact that it might disturb their worship. No, there was no other reason. They were not against music. I see. I understand, too, that there were some things that happened to the frescoes and the windows. Yes, all the frescoes had to be scratched off. In the nearby chapel, they just overpainted it, and later, in the 19th century, they took them off and brought them to the museum. So you still can see them there. The stained glass windows, they were replaced only in 1880, when they were brought to the museum and genuine copies were made out of it. So if we visit the cathedral today, we can still see copies of the stained glass windows that were uh, there in the Reformation. Exactly, it is so. And then of course they have a wonderful new organ which was built by the Metzler Organ Company of Switzerland. Yes, that is a most wonderful organ we have here in the Geneva city. Well, I know Metzler is one of the finest organ builders in the world and uh, it is a magnificent instrument. Thank you so much, Leo, for being on the Joy of Music today. You're welcome.
Geneva is a city with a diverse and fascinating history. Many of its famous citizens have left their indelible marks on the world. Voltaire, Lord Byron, Lenin, John Calvin the Reformer, and Jean-Jacques Rousseau, who prepared the way for the French Revolution, are just a few people who have called Geneva home. The sites in Geneva are legend. The Jet d'eau, its trademark fountain, the Reformation Wall in the Parc de Bastion, and the St. Pierre Cathedral atop the old town with its underground archeological excavations. But Geneva is more than just a beautiful city. Ever since it hosted its first conference in the eighth century, Geneva has been a privileged site for summit meetings, and a favorite headquarters for international organizations.
Behind me stands the original building where the Red Cross was founded in 1863 by Henri Dunant and four other citizens of Geneva. One year later, the Geneva Convention was signed here in the old city. hope you have enjoyed our musical visit to Geneva, Switzerland. With music from St. Pierre Cathedral and sights from the surrounding city and lake, I'd like to leave you with words from the ministers and parish council of St. Pierre. We express the fervent hope that beyond the visible and the words, you have felt the presence of the one whose name is so frequently invoked here at St. Pierre, Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again next week on The Joy of Music.